getting many requests for a donut recipe that's soft and will stay soft for two to three days. I have developed this recipe for you. I hope you'll be happy with this. Let's get started. For the tanzong, you need one third cup all-purpose flour and one cup water. Two thirds cup full cream milk or fresh milk, one tablespoon of instant dry yeast, one half cup sugar, one whole egg, one third cup butter, one half kilo all-purpose flour. You prepare additional 50 grams just in case you need uh, to add more. Then three fourths teaspoon of salt. For the glaze, you need one fourth cup butter or shortening, melted, two cups of sifted confectioners or powdered sugar, one and a half teaspoon of clear vanilla or any vanilla, one fourth cup of hot water, you add more if needed. We will make the tanzong. So I have your water and flour. You cook this until you get a roux or a paste. Don't allow the mixture to boil. You just need to cook this until it starts to thicken or forms a paste. Tanzong is a Japanese technology or a Japanese technique for making soft bread. But it's also common in Taiwanese breads. Okay. After we cook this, we're going to refrigerate this or cool it down before we add this to the dough, okay? So see? It thickens very, very quickly. Don't allow it to boil. I'll shut it off. Then we will put this in the refrigerator to cool down. Put plastic to the touch. Okay, so this is our tanzong. You can make the tanzong the day before. Keep it in the refrigerator. This is what I mean by put plastic to the touch. It should touch the top, okay? I have the milk here, fresh milk or full cream milk. If you want to use evaporated milk, use diluted evaporated milk. Okay, then we have instant dry yeast. All you have to do is stir it. If it's instant, well, you can instantly see the bubbles coming up, okay? See, you can see the bubbles. If you're using active dry yeast, you add a little sugar, a pinch of sugar to the milk or a teaspoon of sugar to the milk and then you add the yeast and you wait for 15 minutes. Once the yeast bubbles up like a foam, then that's the time you can proceed mixing, okay? Since this is instant yeast, so we can continue. There is no waiting time. So I have sugar, egg, then here, remember our tanzong, okay? Our tanzong is now room temp, or it's no longer hot, okay? And then we have flour, all-purpose flour, okay? This is 500 grams, this is the 50 grams, which is on standby, okay? And then you add the salt, you put the salt on top of the flour. Don't mix it directly to the yeast because you will slow down the activity of the yeast. Or sometimes it will kill the yeast, okay? You mix this for about two minutes until the dough comes together and the uh, dough has picked up all the flour. And then we will add the butter. And then at that point, if you think it's too wet, you can add a little flour, okay? Also, at that point, if you think it's too dry, that's the time to adjust the water. Until such time, don't do anything yet. Let me add now the butter. All right, and then we will mix for maybe two minutes and then we will see if we need to add more flour, okay? I think we have enough. So we will mix this for about eight minutes until the dough is smooth and elastic and you get the window pane. I will show you what the window pane will look like. Right, look, you will see that the dough leaves the sides of the bowl clean. Then you know you have enough flour, you have enough liquid, okay? This is one sign that uh, your liquid uh, to flour mixture or proportion is balanced, okay? 
let's check okay first we put a little oil on the bowl and then put oil in your hands you pinch off a small portion look and try to stretch the dough if you can stretch the dough you see the dough is very smooth now and it's elastic see you can stretch it but when you stretch please stretch slowly don't uh, pull it just stretch it very very slowly see it's thin enough you can see the tip of your fingers all right so this is ready this is what you call the window pane this is an indication that you have kneaded it enough that you were able to form the gluten okay You'll notice it's a very soft dough. Okay. So if you don't need extra flour, don't add extra flour. I only use 500 grams. Okay. So you form it into a ball and then turn it over. And if we need more oil, I'll put more oil. Okay. We don't want a skin to form. And then we cover this with plastic. If you don't have plastic, you can use a damp towel or you can just cover this with a baking pan what's important is you close uh you keep this away from draft okay i'll put this on a warm place where it'll rise faster Sorry. here is our donut dough this has been rising for almost an hour okay so but it's double in size how do you know it's double in size you try to poke well, it, you, I usually poke the side, but you can poke the middle. If you poke it, and you will notice that it will not spring back, then you know that it has risen enough, okay? And then we put this here. If you want to use a donut cutter, you just flatten this with a rolling pin, and then cut with a donut cutter. However, but that will have some kind of waste. This one will have no waste because I'm going to form the donut without a cutter. All right, so I'm going to weigh about 60 grams. By the way, the size is up to you when you make this at home. You can make it any size. The next thing we need to do is we need to make a smooth ball. So you can do this, you can tuck this in, do it this way, and then make sure it's close. Again, like this. What's important is you have a smooth ball. Again, like this. Make sure your bottom is also smooth. We don't want a hole in the bottom. Good. Okay. This one has absolutely no scrap. Okay, you can use everything. Because if we use a cutter, then there will be a hole in the middle. And then, of course, you can use that as munchkins. Okay. What you do is you poke, you try to make a center, okay? As I said, I can't do this well, but you know. And then turn it around. You elongate this. Make sure you don't break or cut because you won't be able to put them together, okay? So here is the first one. Okay, what I do is I put it here on a parchment paper. Okay, again, you poke in the middle, and then go around like this, okay? Sometimes, even if you poke in the middle, you're not absolutely sure it's in the center, so you need to adjust a little bit. Like this one is not in the center, so I'll pull a little bit here, okay? Another way you can do it is, can I have a rolling pin? Okay, another way is to do this, okay? Not very, very thin. And then you put, cut a hole with a round cutter. This one looks nicer. And this one, we will just uh, make the munchkins instead of rolling them again and letting it rest because it will take time. You will notice, see, of course this one is nicer because it's more uniform, okay? For purposes of having a nice picture, I will do this method. And then we will use this as munchkins, okay? 
here, uh, here are our donuts. By the way, the reason I put them on the paper so that they don't get deformed because sometimes when you pick them up, you know, it gets uh, a different shape. It gets deformed. And then here, here are the centers. I just formed them into balls. You can also put them all together and then weigh again 60 grams after you have rested it and then you cut, same thing, okay? But you just need to rest. And then we will proof this for about 20 to 30 minutes, okay? Oh, by the way, I forgot. We need to cover this. In the meantime, I'll make the glaze. I have melted butter. You can also use shortening if you want the white look. Okay, this one is a little bit yellowish because of the butter. This is powdered sugar. And then we have water. Uh, if you can find clear vanilla, use clear vanilla. But, you know, I have the brown vanilla. So, it's just for color. And add the water gradually. We call this the creamy glaze. See, it's yellowish because of the butter. If you use shortening, it's whitish. However, uh, the butter will taste so much better, okay? This is warm water. All right. Okay, this is the uh, non, uh, what you call it, scientific way of checking if the oil is hot. You put a stick, a wooden stick in the middle. If you see the bubbles uh, around the stick, it means the oil is at least 340 degrees. At least, huh? It could be 375, it could be 400. Okay? So, here you can see, it's now double in size. Okay? I don't know why there's a black spot there. Maybe that's from my old. Okay. Next. You see? That's what I said. It will get deformed when you touch it. What you can do is, you can slip it down like that. But it will be on the other side. But you can always flip it over. Okay? See, it's very, very soft. That anything that you touch, it will make an indentation. We can fit five, but we'll only put four because we won't be able to flip it. Once the bottom starts to get brown, we flip it, okay? Uh, normally, we would cook it about one and a half minute per side. You try to maintain a temperature of 350, 340. You can only do that with a thermometer. All right. Yes. The nicest looking donut is the one that you that you uh, cut with a donut cutter. But anyway, I'm not so concerned about this because this is a glaze. Okay, flip. Once it, you see it getting brown, you flip it. Okay. I intentionally made these balls instead of forming them like that because I want to show you when you make this, you have to constantly uh, move this so that it will uh, brown on both sides, okay? Okay, now you have to constantly move this so that it will brown on all sides, okay? Otherwise, it will brown only on one side. Okay. I have many recipes to share with you. If you're interested, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be alerted when a new video is uploaded. So we have this glaze, remember? We made the glaze. We will see if we need to add more water. See, this is what I said, it thickens. So we need another, we need a little more water. 
Okay, just in case you accidentally put too much uh, too much water, what you can do is you can just add more powdered sugar. So this is what you do. We always glaze the nicer star. Okay. So choose the nicer side. I want you to try this. This is really super soft, even when it's a day old. I tried uh, when I made this. I experimented. I kept one or two, uh, yeah, one piece for about ma maximum was four days. Okay, all right. So here are your super soft donuts. You can also glaze this. You can dip the whole thing, or we can drizzle it like this. Okay. I will just pour the glaze here. You use a colander so you can save the glaze and be able to use the drippings. Strain the drippings and use it again. All right. Okay. Let me open one and show you. Let me take out my gloves since I'm going to eat this. Okay, let me choose. Okay, this one. See? You see, it's super, super soft. See? Okay, see? So I hope you'll give this a try.